I just talked to Cory, and he needs you to be the Mouse King instead of me. Me? But I'm supposed to be a mute tree. It's an emergency. This will help us get to regionals. I knew it! Wait, where are the lyrics? They're in your heart, Britta. Right! The <laughs> day! Is in this? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life. It's episode 321. It is a very important week in December of 2022. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and the only wrestling podcast pretty tumultuous week in wwe let's begin with vince mcmahon has a new allegation of sexual assault previously unreported a new wall street journal piece and which they casually dropped in the vince mcmahon says that he got bad advice he thinks his scandal which he loved being in has blown over and he wants to return to wwe what? <laughs> I mean, what do you think of it? Well, yeah, what do you think of this? I mean, yeah, guys like guys like Vince don't want to go quietly into the night, right? They want to they want to die having an orgasm at the age of 107. Like, whoa, not... that was graphic. <laughs> Sorry, I I mean, what else? What else does this guy want to do? Like, he wants to control everything that he can control for as long as he can control it, and so. I, yeah, I think he he wants that back because again, what's what's he been doing? Shuffling around his weird apartment that looked exactly like his home office. I I I, I suppose I, I that's it's been the number one question is what has Vince been doing, and the answer is he's been plotting his revenge. <laughs> <laughs> he's been making a list of enemies. <laughs> that's right, including and he, you would assume his daughter and son-in-law. Yes. He already <laughs> killed Shane, so. <laughs> Shane, who will never get another pop. <laughs> as long as Vince is in charge. That's right. Uh, oh, man. Well, there's that. And there's also uh, WWE took the women's NXT women's title off of Mandy Rose after 400 plus days. And then summarily fired her the next day. <laughs> allegedly for posting risque content on a subscription website <laughs> a train <laughs> went to Shawn Michaels and was like Shawn I've been studying these <laughs> these images for for research <laughs> for the good of our industry <laughs> And frankly, I believe they may have gone too far. <laughs> this image that I saw 24 hours ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Mandy Rose got fired. I don't know how she could be making more money on a subscription website that I've never heard of. Th- than she is from WWE. Or if she is, in fact making more money from a subscription website than she was from WWE. One, that's quite the indictment of WWE. (laughs) Two, is this like a symbiotic relationship where it's being on television every week has given her the exposure to, no pun intended, to sell (laughs) a, a subscription site and maybe that will stop when she's no longer on television every week, like, is do you go ahead and make the short term cash grab and do whatever anyway? The four the four hundred plus day women's champion dropping the title to Roxanne Perez and being fired feels like a pretty big story. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's it was an in, insane couple of hours. Obviously, as we talked about last week, we were puzzling over who was even going to win that number one contenders match. You, you did say that you thought Roxanne would win because she was the only baby face in the match. Yeah. And, yes. uh, and she did win. And then all of a sudden, like, I didn't know they were doing the match that night. Like, I don't, I don't watch NXT most weeks, but I at least 
like generally speaking, keep abreast, so to speak, of the of the cards. And uh, I didn't know until like I saw the the video of of her winning of Roxanne winning the title had uh, had tweeted uh, had been tweeted out. I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. And then sure enough, the next morning, Mandy was gone. And uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's the short term. She has this site. She can now do other brand deals. And if she wants to hit the, you know, the wrestlecades and cons and, and everything, she can, you know, make some money if she's comfortable being in that close proximity to wrestling fans, which I would not be, but uh, <laughs> wrestling, I would not be wanted to be standing very close to anyone who would pay to <laughs> meet Mandy Rose. But uh, no, I mean, like that's, that's, that's what she's, that's her options. Like it doesn't seem like AEW would be interested in her. It doesn't seem like, I don't think she's going to go on a tear through stardom. Like I don't, I don't feel like I ever saw her wrestling anywhere, but WWE, um, which is not a bad thing. Like it's just like she was tailor made for that, and they recruited her and 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 kept her around for a very long time. I I do wonder if this was the only straw. If it was just too, it just got too risque, and they said delete these and shut the site down. And she said no, and they said all right, you're fired. I have to think there maybe are some other issues that led up to this maybe on their end where they were looking for a reason to get rid of her or on her end where she just wanted out. I don't know. I'm just, just spitballing here. The fact that they just sent her to NXT unceremoniously a year ago, I always thought was kind of strange right around the time that the, the, uh, the roster started touring again, they just sent her to Orlando (laughs) Uh, I thought that was a little bit uh, strange at the time. So I, I'm i almost uh, I'm almost sure well, that there are other issues at play here as well. But obvious, obviously, this was the thing. The Al- Albert's research <laughs> with uh, with her site uh, going going a little too far this week. I mean, that's obviously what broke the camel's back. But I guess I just wonder, did they tell did, were they looking for a reason to get rid of her? she went too far. So they gave her this ultimatum knowing she would say no, or was she like, I don't give an F if I get fired or not. So I'm just going to do this thing to try to build my, to build my brand uh, for when I'm gone. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not sure about that. I think you could draw a reasonable person could examine the, (laughs) examine the situation of her being sent back to NXT and reach the conclusion. Huh? For some reason, they were not comfortable with her touring. Mm. Given the given the climate we were in uh, 18 months ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think that could be? Well, Vac- vaccination status. Correct. <laughs> and considering that everybody else who didn't want to get vaccinated allegedly was fired. <laughs> it seemed like they must have really liked her to not just outright fire her like they did everybody else. Right? You could also, a reasonable person could also make that assumption, yes. And perhaps the people, person or people say a head of talent relations that no longer works for the company (laughs) or a former CEO was perhaps the one that was most fond of her and uh, sent her there to protect her uh, rather than let her go. Um, and maybe those people aren't there anymore. And now you've got good, good, strong Christian Shawn Michaels running the performance center. And, uh, maybe they, maybe the, the current uh, regime was not quite such a big fan of her as the previous one was. Maybe, maybe not. They did keep the title on her for, you know, five plus months or whatever after the, uh, after the new regime took over. So. I don't know. It's one of those things where, you know, when this all blows over, I wouldn't be surprised if in six months she's back there, you know? Sure. I mean, it just, yeah, like to me, unless she's just going to do the con circuit the rest of her life, it just doesn't seem like a person that would wrestle. Like, and if she did, it feels like if you saw a match that uh, Tennille Dashwood had outside of WWE, 
just a person on autopilot like <laughs> and that's what it feels like it would be if mandy went to impact or did indies or whatever so uh you know i have to assume that yeah between her whatever her the off-brand only fans and the she has like her side thing with uh she and sonia have some kind of business together don't they they sell donuts that's right they have like I, a cloud kitchen that makes donuts right so and then whatever other it's one of those one of those actually <laughs> it's like it's like woo wings <laughs> yes um and uh and then whatever other third party brand deals she is uh now free to take on um yeah i guess i guess we'll have to see if that's enough to i don't know what kind of lifestyle she and uh she did she is she married to tino sabatelli they are engaged at least okay <laughs> so like yeah I, I don't know what kind of lifestyle they lead well kind of... allegedly they were engaged in, in the one photo that broke the camel's back <laughs> Hey oh <laughs> that would that would get a Kevin Eubanks like uh bass yes <laughs> bass strum there. Yes. Um but yes, a uh I don't know, like in, if if maybe if they can they can just make money off of side appearances and 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 you know softcore they, pornography. <laughs> the, those two have a personal training business together also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They like sell diet plans and uh and Tino made like actual decent NFL money for a few years there. So mm, if he's not an idiot, I guess. Yeah. I, I say, you know, it's somewhat an open ended question, almost a question <laughs> if he isn't an idiot. <laughs> and, you know, he's he managed to get invited and not and disinvited from AEW. That's so. true. <laughs> He went there and immediately began leaking spoilers. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I don't know about uh, everyone's uh, intelligence level here, but it's an interesting story. Mm-hmm. Uh, we yeah. kind of we kind of undersold Vince wanting to come <laughs> back. I think, <laughs> like, I feel like there's a non-zero chance that this happens. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's. Um, a strong chance right now everybody's like well the board the board isn't gonna let him come back i was like well you know technically he can just fire the board right <laughs> um still this can get this can get really messy if right. if he wants it to um, right so so i i just don't know how messy it's going to get i don't i don't have a good feel for that yet hopefully very because it'll be fun <laughs> um but yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, like we touched on briefly before we got distracted, uh, <laughs> like Albert did uh, by Mandy Rose's uh, yeah. uh, OnlyFans. Uh, yeah, I, I just think that's what an old, rich, powerful person wants to do. Like, I bet Harvey Weinstein thinks that before he got arrested or whatever, like, I bet he thought the scandal could have blown over, too, and he could have stayed in in charge. Like, I think that's what powerful people who get caught doing bad things <laughs> with their penis uh tend to uh tend to try to come back or or think they could come back um you know and hey i mean depending on what you do in our society you do get to come back sometimes mel gibson gets to make family comedies with will ferrell <laughs> you know if you if you give him enough time and you were in a popular enough thing sometimes people do forget like i think if they hit they could have whatever the current announcer on Monday Night Raw is at 7.55 p.m. on Monday, read out a list of every allegation uh, a- that has ever been levied against Vince McMahon and the things that are like a matter of now like public record and court of law that he absolutely did as far as his abuses of power and things like that. You could read that all out from 7.55 to 7.59 p.m., assuming you're you know a fast talker. And right. then if at 8 p.m. no chance in hell hit, crowd would erupt. Everyone would stand up and bow because he's a cartoon <laughs> character to most people. And he was funny and he was a good television performer. So people would people would love the eye, like eyeballs would be glued to their screen if if they announced that Vince McMahon was coming back to Raw. So like that's probably part of it, too. He he. He feels like he could, you know, he could control, he could control his narrative, so to speak. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I just to me, it just feels like an old, powerful man who got to do whatever you want for 50 for 50 years. And now he's out of power and doesn't get to do whatever you want and is facing the most minimal consequences that someone like that ever faces. Right. And he's mad and he wants he wants his power back. He wants his toy chest back. It's very, very interesting. But you are right. I mean, he's still by far he's control. He's had, you know, he has the most shares. It's not even close. Whoever has the second most shares in the company is minuscule compared to what he owns. So, yes, he could. And if they won't and if the board tries to make it, if there's lawsuits brought against him by the company to try to keep him from coming back, yes. he can also still just try to, you know, with unofficially exercise his, uh, you know, his voting powers or or, you know, try to sell to sell some of his shares to a proxy and, and, and or whatever. Like there's a million things he can do with this, with the power he still technically wields, even if he hasn't been exercising it as of late so another wwe story that we have been uh, uh chatting about a lot off the air this week uh it's tangentially wwe related but it may lead to uh an increased chance of dwayne johnson working wrestlemania and that's the uh the implosion <laughs> of the dwayne johnson henry cavill uh, Danny Garcia, uh, Hiram Garcia, uh, Seven Box Productions, uh, DC Extended Universe uh, film series that Dwayne and company were planning. James Gunn has decided <laughs> to go in a different direction mm -hmm. with his DC universe that includes apparently scrapping uh, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. scrapping Henry Cavill as Superman, and uh, and scrapping Dwayne and whatever he had planned for his DC universe. Dwayne's people have uh, fired back with by allegedly doing doing some light fraud. <laughs> leaking information that black had misleading information that implied that black Adam was going to make money when in fact it appears that it is going to be a money loser at the end of the day. Anyway, Dwayne's at least his DC movie career is in, uh, is in question right now. And uh, maybe this leads to him having some free time in his schedule in uh, March and April to do uh, a short uh, program with the travel chief. What do you think? Well, my big thought is he needs a win right now, right? It's important for the Dwayne brand that he can't let this sit on him for too long. We can't let people start whispering that Dwayne Johnson's drawing power as a big Hollywood leading man is, is on his way out, you know? Right. Even though right. he's about to hit 50 year. Is he 50? Yes. Okay. So, like, I think I believe he turned fifty this year. I'll look be, it up while you're talking. Right. And to be fair, Tom Cruise is like sixty-seven and still an, an action star. So it's not as if that me the age is the only reason. But this is not the first Dwayne Johnson movie in the last few years that has not done well commercially with him as the leading man. And I think Dwayne is going to need a big win and coming back for WrestleMania. And having one last big match and selling out, uh, they're in LA, right? For this one, the the Ram Stadium. Yep. Selling yes. out that new big, big giant stadium in LA, and uh, and and wrestling in the main event, uh, and uh, doing whatever they do <laughs> with that match. Be great if he won, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Um, I think it would be incredible if he won. Uh, but uh, but yes, yeah, so you get you get to come back and do this feud. I mean, it would be great for WWE, but I think on the Dwayne side now, it's been the only reason I think I know he loves wrestling. I know he respects it. There's the story of, you know, in 2011, his agent told him not to go back and he fired his agent over it. Right. Um. So like, I don't I don't 
despite the fact that I don't really think that Dwayne Johnson is a real person anymore. <laughs> Uh, sure. I, I think I think there's a part of him that knows that wrestling gave him everything that he has, or at least gave him the building blocks for. It, and I think he will want to go back. And so maybe he would make time for it, even if Black Adam was a huge success. But with that on the failure, all this mud thrown on his name, so to speak, in the last week, uh, no other big franchises on the horizon for him. Yeah, this is the time if he's ever going to do the match. It's now. Um, so I think I think the chances of uh, of uh, to turn a phrase, the hierarchy of power in uh, in the WWE universe may be about to change. Interesting. Uh, point one. Yes, he did turn 50 this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, point two. He uh, turned down a cameo in Shazam 2. Mm hmm. <laughs> Black Adam traditionally being a Shazam or Captain Marvel, as it was known, villain. Yes. Uh, no, he said uh, he said no to that. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Uh, that is WWE. New Japan announced the full card for the Tokyo Dome. It's not particularly exciting card i would say Mm -hmm. um but the report that we first talked about on last week's show of sasha banks being at the show is in fact accurate fightful reported this week that sasha banks release was in fact um Somehow negotiated by her agent and lawyer and all that over the summer. Mm -hmm. She was free to take wrestling bookings on January 1st. And she agreed to this deal with New Japan uh, at the end of November. And there was also a report from the Voices of Wrestling people, I believe, that... She's making more per New Japan shot than Chris Jericho did. <laughs> and Chris Chris Jericho made one hundred thousand dollars a shot for New Japan. It's an interesting play from all sides, I think. Yeah, I mean, for her, I think. Well, especially in the news that Vince might be coming back this week. <laughs> she looks like the biggest genius of uh, of them all so far. Her and uh, and Naomi for not uh, for not running back as soon as Paul got into power. Um, but yeah, I think it, obviously she again, kind of like we just talked about with Dwayne. I think it's clear if you followed her career. She doesn't just she's not a person who believes that Vince McMahon created the entire, you know, the entire wrestling business. Mm -hmm. She she loves, you know, Japanese and and Lucha wrestling and all that stuff. So I think it seems like maybe it's a a bucket list thing for her because she was signed so young and has Mm -hmm. been in WWE for so long. Um, And then so I think it I understand it from her sense. And, And again, she can do this for six months. She can do it for a year and ain't like WWE is going to say no. If she decides she wants to go back, you know, <laughs> there's that WWE is always going to be there um, for her. And it's a return space business now, as we've talked about. So, right. That's how you, you know, that's, 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 so it seems like a, you know, not necessarily a no brainer, but also, I, I, I don't think she's going to be, obviously she's not going to live in Japan. She's not going to be working, stardom full time my even if she does end up say she shows up as uh Soraya's tag team partner in AEW I you know a lot of people in AEW have side projects as well and yep. do acting and do whatever else she might I don't I don't know if she's she's in the new Mandalorian season or not but yeah and whatever she, whatever else she wants to do like it, it just seems like if you're if you're what what is she 30 31 I think she Turn, she turned i know she turned 30 this year <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it's like okay you and you've been in that machine and you've been running 150 days a year or whatever for or lot more maybe in some years and uh and running in this grind for so long and then you hit your breaking point you leave 
and now you get a chance to to still participate in wrestling, which you love, but also maybe look around and see if there are other areas of your of your life or of show business that you think you have a chance to excel in. Yeah, this this makes perfect sense for her. Um, does it make financial sense for New Japan to bring her in? I I feel like it's it's been said that like the Jericho Omega match is one of the more important matches of the last 20 years. Yeah. Because people credit it with an uptick in New Japan world subscriptions, which led to uptick in popularity for the elite, which led to AEW, obviously. Right. Um, so you know, maybe if you're looking at at boosting New Japan and stardom and getting more eyeballs outside of japan back on the product sasha banks is as good and i think as good of a free agent name that's out there currently that you could pick so yeah why not like and again if i don't think i don't think it's going to go out i don't think the company's going to go out of business if they pay her pay her big money and she does you know let's say six eight or eight eight matches over there <laughs> next year I don't, it's not going to so I think I think it's worth them taking a shot to try to jumpstart some some you know obviously specifically U.S. fan interest in their stuff again. So I I think it kind of makes sense to to, te- to t- for for both sides here to to test the waters. And quite frankly, she is a really big star. And if you look at her, not that it's the same thing. Uh, you know, paper stardom world buys are not the same thing. Or or fight TV pay-per-view buys are not the same as SmackDown ratings, but it's like she was a legitimate needle mover and not many people are in wrestling anymore. So I think this, I think this makes sense for everybody involved. I, I think primarily, I don't want to, well, I think she's going to be working new Japan dates in the United States more than she's going to be working new Japan dates in Japan. Mm-hmm. Like I to me, the first match is her against Kyrie in February in San Jose. Mm-hmm. Like I think that I think that's match one. And yeah, she might do dome shows if they do dome shows, but I think primarily this is gonna be her working a couple dates over there, a couple dates here and there in the United States, and she'll have plenty of time to do outside stuff and she'll have freedom to go to AEW if she wants to. And with the way they book or don't book their women's division, um, you know, she can come and go. And yeah, so I think that's, uh, I think that's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good gamble for all sides. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, Speaking of AEW, um, Action Andretti came in this week and beat Chris Jericho. Yeah, it was uh, Chris. <laughs> he's a crafty little. <laughs> he's a crafty little devil, isn't he? He um, decided to do the Kevin Nash putting over Rey Mysterio thing, right? <laughs> and uh, and to do it in a way. And I saw like, and I I tend to um, trust Sean Waltman's wrestling opinions Mm -hmm. a lot and he said he said he wouldn't liken it to that or to even to scott hall putting over sean waltman he would liken it more to if when sean waltman wrestled brett brett put him over like that's he thought it was that like much of a star making so i i trust his judgment to an extent Mm -hmm. that that being (laughs) said (laughs) When this match was over, I didn't see a lot of people talking about action Andretti. I saw a lot of people, mostly because, you know, Chris Jericho is friends with the right people, let's say. Yeah. And saw a lot of talk about how Chris Jericho plucked this kid out of obscurity and uh, and decided he was going to make a new star tonight. And first of all, in a bo- in a vacuum, great. You could argue perhaps that he could have done this with like, I don't know, Fuego del Sol or somebody that's already been under contract for like a year. Sure. But this if he thinks this action Andretti guy is the guy. I will say also, like, this is all based off of apparently this guy and QT Marshall had a very good match on Dark a month or two ago that got like a standing ovation from the boys in the back. So it's not like 
it was just some ho hum dark match and Jericho plucked him. It was like the crowd was going crazy for it. And everybody, everybody was very impressed with this kid. So again, good work by him. Theoretically, this could be a good thing, but to me when it was over, it felt more like warrior and Hogan. (laughs) Everybody's watching Jericho. It was not about, you know, action Andretti, the new big star. It was about, Chris Jericho lost to a nobody and and then the narrative in in the next 24 hours from the podcasters and and <laughs> the wrestling media is wow what a great selfless selfless act <laughs> uh uh Chris Jericho pulled off and what a what a great veteran he is uh putting over this new guy so it feels like even though yes he did a clean job in the middle of the ring to a nobody and theoretically, that could make that nobody a somebody. The point was not we're making this new guy. The point was we're starting a storyline about how Jericho's lost a step. <laughs> yes. This comes after he tapped out to a giant swing at mm-hmm. uh, Ring of Honor Final Battle. Ring of Honor is going to be a separate brand. The television will live on Honor Club for the time being, which tells you that. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery did not have interest in adding more wrestling programming at this time, Mm -hmm. which does not sound promising to me. It sounds to me like there's a rumor that they're going to tape it at Universal Studios, which is where they tape their YouTube shows. Sounds like a, a very bad deal all around to me. Like I was not filled with hope for the future of Ring of Honor when Tony Khan said that, well, you can pay nine dollars a month or whatever to see it along with all the archives of ring of honor uh you could pay for the privilege of watching ring of honor television every month uh to me it sounds like a dead brand and uh, i said when he bought it he bought a dead brand so there's that yeah i mean it's it's hard to argue with (laughs) with that um yeah i guess it was a dead giveaway when the briscoes (laughs) when the briscoes won the tag titles that uh that Warner Brothers wasn't interested <laughs> in uh, in Ring of Honor. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't. And I guess what other networks are there? <laughs> even if you know, even if there was interest, you know, can't put it on an NBC Universal station. AB, I mean, ABC <laughs> like, and Fox. It's like, well, they're you know, Hulu. No, it's like, where are you gonna? Where is this gonna live? If WB is your only real possible partner. Yeah, a lot uh, like a few cable, a few conglomerates own most of basic cable now. (laughs) Right. It's just how it is. Right. And when you're when the 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 industry leader has television contracts with two of those, (laughs) Mm -hmm. two of the four conglomerates that own everything, your options are pretty limited, especially if it's clear that one of the other ones the one you already work with wasn't interested. <laughs> well, so, okay, you could try to go make a pitch to Paramount or somebody, but if they know that you're, they're your only hope and they're not really interested in wrestling, at least not your brand of wrestling, not it's the, it's the, it's the minor leagues of the second of the minor leagues, so to speak. And I'm not saying right. AEW is minor league necessarily, but that is how I think most television executives would look at it is, WWE is the Kleenex. They're the Purell, right? People that right. don't know anything about wrestling call it WWE. Um, so it's an uphill battle already. And if you have no other interested parties, it's going to be hard to negotiate a deal with anybody. So yeah, uh, given all of the time they spent, quote unquote, building the ROH brand on AEW television this this uh, this past year, I don't know how you could say that was anything other than kind of an abject failure. I'm not saying every ROH related thing was bad. There was some good wrestling we got out of it, Um, but it was not, uh, you can't call it. I don't think you can call it a success in any way. And I think you have to kind of call it a failure because the whole point was we'll build ROH up on our show and theoretically sacrifice some of our television time to, to build this third brand or this third show. And now that show is on a paywall and uh, that's that's not a success. So bum, bummer, <laughs> you know, it, 
would always like to see a, you know, a place thrive and have more an ability to pay more people and more people get work, but the didn't really work out. It'll stay alive as long as Tony wants to fund it. Mm -hmm. And that could be forever. <laughs> he's, I, I don't think he's in danger of running out of money anytime soon. So it's maybe not a, the final nail in the coffin, but for now, yes, big disappointment, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, a lot of big bill <laughs> on AEW this week. He was the protagonist of AEW this week. Yes, the new star of AEW is Big Bill. <laughs> Former W. Morrissey, the former big cast, Big Bill. Like His I, name is Big Bill. Like, I agree that W. Morrissey is a terrible name and not and not a tenable thing. Like, you had to get oh, rid of that. Yeah. Oh, agreed. But why not? Could you not? Could you not copyright like Big Dub? Is that not better? I, I don't know if there are a lot of winners here, but I think Big Dub is probably better than Big Bill. I mean, his name was Big Cass. That's not exactly fantastic <laughs> either, but people got used to it. I just feel like it. you need, <laughs> I don't know, Big Bill just sounds like, it sounds like a world-class jobber. <laughs> yes, a thousand percent. Guy, yeah, guy who works on the undercard with Gino Hernandez or somebody. Like, it just doesn't feel like a... Uh, just doesn't feel like a, a 2022 top guy or or big giant that you want to build up for, you know, one of your top guys to slay down the line. A thousand, a thousand percent. Uh, MJF beat Ricky Starks. I don't think that's a surprise. But uh, what'd you think of the match? Yeah, I thought they had a pretty good match. Um, I it, I thought this crowd that they were in front of uh, was absolutely incredible and i think if there's one thing that aew still has over every other wrestling company in the world it's when they get in front of one of these hot crowds the show has a life to it that no other wrestling show does um and i think that that was on display in the opener with the elite and death triangle and then that main event even though i think nobody really believed that ricky starks was going to win the world title um i think they still they still bit on every near fall. They still wanted Ricky. They still lived and died by him getting to the ropes when MJF put him in the in the arm bar and everything. So, yeah, it was a really good crowd. And then you set up your next program, which is going to be Danielson and MJF. Uh, although I'm curious, <laughs> based on the video packages and stuff, they're going out of their way to not show William Regal. So I'm curious <laughs> if they'll just... <laughs> We're just going to have to infer why Brian Danielson hates MJF from here on out. We're never going to mention <laughs> William Regal's name again. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that's that. That'll be a fun program. And I, I think it's kind of crazy that Brian Danielson's been there for, you know, going on like 16 months or something now. And he hasn't really had any kind of long world title program, much less won the thing yet. So, yeah, I think it feels like it's about time. I think we have a window, a very small window of uh, 10 days to two weeks here before the end of the year where Regal can be mentioned. Ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they'll, they'll lightly touch on it and uh, and then move on. Yeah. I got no problem with that as program. It's a good program. Um, yeah. The acclaimed. <laughs> the acclaimed are going to wrestle Jeff Jarrett. And the... I. And Jay Lethal. Oh boy, I I didn't did not think that was a good segment, or a, a don't think that's a good direction for the acclaimed. Um, <laughs> My only solace is that I was really afraid that Jericho was going to attach himself to the acclaimed. Oh, there's that, <laughs> and I think at this point maybe it's better because the Jarrett program, at least the first one, was kind of short. Yeah, it only went like four or five weeks leading into the pay per view. So hopefully this is just like a television cycle, and then the acclaim get to move on. Whereas every Jericho feud goes for six months, and almost nobody except maybe MJF came out of it better. <laughs> kind of a miracle that <laughs> MJF did not end up in exactly the same place after the Jericho feud. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's the darndest thing. All righty. Uh, kind of circling 
calling back around to WWE. They crowned new number one contenders to the U.S. title and Raw Women's title on the program this week with Alexa Bliss, the Lady Fiend, uh, next in line for Bianca Belair, and uh, Seth Rollins next in line for Austin Theory in a program that will never end. Uh, at least, I guess, Alexa and Bianca is new, even if they are teasing uh, more uh, supernatural stuff uh, with that going forward. Um, other than that, kind of holding pattern until they start doing Royal Rumble qualifying matches and things of that nature uh, over the next month, month and a half. They have a lot of time between pay-per-view cycles. But any thoughts on WWE television this week? It's just... It's such just a glacially slow show, <laughs> like as far as advancing anything that happens on it. And I understand that that's like that's kind of the old school way. And you just do little snippets and you do little things and you build up to it. And I think that works on an hour show or even a two hour show, because not everybody has to be on the show every week then. Sure. But this is like the 18th straight week that the Bray Wyatt logo has flashed on the screen and and. Alexa has gone into some sort of trance. Yes. And snapped out of it suddenly. Um, so just, I don't know, maybe do something else. Maybe like push it forward. I'm, I'm not happy <laughs> to see the return of the fiendess Alexa Bliss. It was one of the worst uh, storylines <laughs> in the history of professional wrestling. Um, and it was directly marketed at pedophiles. It's one of the worst things the company has ever done from a purely creative, from a creative bankruptcy standpoint. Yes. Um, it was one of the worst things they've ever done. So I'm not happy about that. But at this point, I'd rather just get it over with because then the crowd can maybe reject it. And maybe this regime isn't so stubborn that they'll move on if something isn't working. So, you know, fingers crossed, we could just we could just start moving on with the same thing with whatever the Bray stuff is. I have long since accepted that there is a percentage of the WWE audience who lives and dies by this man and everything he does, like, <laughs> everything he does is great. I don't understand it. It's terrible to me, but <laughs> for, for 46 weeks since he come back, he cuts a promo about how he's a nice, he's a nice gentleman. <laughs> and then a guy himself in a Halloween mask or his, <laughs> or his brother shows up and says, no, actually you're secretly evil. And now for some reason, Eli, now he's feuding with Eli Drake. So uh, just let's just move on with it. Let's get him in the ring unless he's injured or something, in which case take him off TV. Uh, but just just let's just move on with it. That's my main my main thought with this show. It feels like we've just been we've been teasing the exact same thing in the exact same way, not dissimilarly from what they did with this this Miz and Dexter Loomis storyline that for some reason is still still going on. Uh but just it's just week after week of the same darn thing. And it's not a bad show. And there's usually good wrestling on the show. So it's it's watchable. But it's just so dull for me to get through most weeks. And it's it shouldn't be given how much talent is on the show. Smackdown at two hours is much more palatable. Mm -hmm. But yes, these three hour Raws where. Look. Their status as uh, Disney adults, notwithstanding, uh, generally the Garganos, the wrestling, uh, Johnny wrestling, Candace wrestling, baby wrestling, uh, mm -hmm. got no problem with them as human beings. Think they're good people. Want the best for them as people in their careers. God bless them. Uh, they've made, they've managed to make them absolutely excruciating. <laughs> grading to watch on television every week and they're in no less than a dozen segments on every Monday Night Raw and Dexter Loomis is all over the show and it's like how did Dexter Loomis become the protagonist of WWE <laughs> yeah, it was wild Tegan Knox came back I don't think we've talked about that and good for her um, yeah. and they did a video package about her yeah. And like, and I'm not somebody that feels that a wrestling audience has to be spoon fed <laughs> everything. It's one of the things that frustrates me about the way people talk about AEW a lot is because I think there's so many real things to critique about that show mm -hmm. and acting like you have to hold the audience's hand constantly is not one of them. Sure. Um, 
So I don't want to say that, but like when it comes to Dexter Loomis or he's, he just kind of showed up one week, same yeah. with Johnny Gargano. And if you knew Johnny Gargano from before, that's exciting. But most of their audience, I mean, if you compare who was watching NXT every week when Gargano was on that show on USA to who watches raw every week, honestly, the, the difference in the size of the audience is getting smaller <laughs> these last few weeks, but like I, I, I don't think it's an issue of the audience not knowing them, but they don't. They just kind of showed up, and they don't really have a lot going on, so they're just kind of on the show. And you've, as you said, they've taken Gargano, one of the, like the most naturally likable people in in modern wrestling, and now he's 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 acting. Can you imagine this, Ethan? He's <laughs> acting like how Shawn Michaels and Triple H acted when they were baby faces, which is to say, annoying. <laughs> They have, they have no idea. After twenty five years, they still mm-hmm. don't get it. They still don't get it after twenty five years. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's it's really unbelievable. We just learn we just learn no lessons, or we learn the wrong <laughs> lessons, right? But yep, just right. that's that's that that to me is that's the biggest issue. It's people in the wrong roles or people just kind of being thrown out cold. It's like yeah, Emma's been back for like a month now. What's she up to? <laughs> I think she had well, a match the other week. <laughs> she's in a storyline romance with Madcap Moss. I think that's a real life romance. I believe it is. I think it's playing out on, on screen. So it's well. kind of amazing they don't have more on screen chemistry than they do. <laughs> it's uh I don't think either is ever going to win an Emmy Award. <laughs> <laughs> oh, classic stuff. And he's still madcap. <laughs> yeah, we changed uh we changed LA Knight's name back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh Madcap Moss is still Madcap Moss. <laughs> <laughs> After five months of the new regime. It's tremendous. Absolutely. What a rib. Yeah. All right. Anything else? No, I think that about uh, that about wraps it up for this week. All right. Well till next time everybody, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. I've got to go home. You'll freeze out there. Say, lend me your Afro comb. Eat some f***ing brush. You've really been grand. Your eyes are like starlight now. don't you see? How can you do this thing to There's me? It's bound to be taught tomorrow. Making my life long Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Had a fun morning uh, where uh, it was freezing rain. But, All right. but I had no more sick days and... Uh, a conference call webinar i had to be on at 9 30 okay so i was like well guess i gotta go to work (laughs) and so i did (laughs) and it was mostly fine (laughs) but there was a moment there nice show yeah there's just a moment there i was like what a ridiculous way to die this would be (laughs) (laughs) hit a patch of ice one of those lights on Bel Air Road where there's just a puddle of water sitting because it's a very poorly maintained road. Every time it rains, there's just just what there's just a river there two minutes after it starts raining, and then all all it drops below freezing. It's gonna be even worse. Great. <laughs> Great. <sighs> but it didn't happen. We lived to die on Bel Air Road another day. The bravery on display, frankly, is inspiring. It's true. Big, big, strong motorcycle guys come up to me and uh, and ask if uh, if they can buy an NFT trading card of of me driving to work in uh, unpleasant weather. <laughs> yes, understandable. Understandable. Oh boy. I have a Java monster here. I'm going to crack open. Nice. Is it a mean bean or a uh, 
locomotive. It is. It is a mean bean. All right. Become more of a fan. I like the mean bean Java monster. What I can't abide by is the Starbucks energy shot vanilla. That one tastes like medicine to me. All right. That's fair. But even that's though that's fair, ostensibly the same concoction with a different brand name on it. The, the mean bean uh, Java monster works, works for me. Yeah. I try to keep on keeping on.